well i couldn't resist the other side is baby smooth so these two really bad areas right here i went ahead and put another very light coat of jb weld on them so uh we'll have to lightly sand them again tomorrow but uh i mean yeah i couldn't leave it alone everything else is baby smooth on this thing so all right um I'll work on the rims here in a minute. All right, it's try number two. I'm letting them warm up in the sun a little bit. It's uh, 51 Fahrenheit out here. And unfortunately, I don't have a way to hang these in the sun. Maybe I do. A little tree over there, maybe. Let me, let me see if I can hang them in there. All right, well, I put one here, and I got one way over there. So we'll just let them set in the sun for a little while. I'll try to get some paint on them. Well, I think I prefer this Rust-Oleum paint plus primer. And unfortunately, uh, I didn't have any more in black. So I went Ace Hardware and I got their premium. It does say paint and primer. But uh, I don't know. It's just different. Uh, let me show you. So, yeah, the wind's kicking up, but, yeah, you can tell when you put paint on it, you can see the defects. I need to do a little bit more filing around there. Uh, this is the first coat. I got a little bit there. Uh, I thought I saw a hole that I'm going to have to refile. Might be on the other one. Let's go look. So, I got a little bit of a run right there. And yeah, there's a hole. I need to refile it. Looking around the edges. This one looks sad. I might have a little bit right there. So I'm going to let these dry. And then I'm going to refile these edges and that hole. And uh, put a second coat on them. This is the first coat. But yeah, you can see. You can still see the. But it's not near as bad. And there's them bees again. Darn. All right, well, I got these about as blemish free as I'm gonna get them until I get the rubber back on them. Let's look at the other one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be it. So hopefully the beads of hold air but these are going to have to harden up a couple days before I go try to mount them well this will be the last part I need to work on to be able to put together a rolling chassis so I went through all my spindles and I found two that have absolutely no play this one's just a little bit looser than this one but the uh, yeah, I've got I got a, another set of these. This one, it looks like the bushing came off out of the uh, the axle itself. So, but these two will work fine. And uh, if not, I still need to finish tearing this one down. But uh, yeah, we've got two more there. And I'm going to the hardware store. I'm gonna pick up a new axle bolt. But, uh, yeah, plenty of parts still. Well, I'm pulling another oil sample here. And the way I do it, I got this little tube. I stick it down in the uh, dipstick hole. And then I'll suck, get it all the way up to the top. And then move it over to the cup. Uh, it doesn't taste too bad. So the tube is actually part of a uh, Harbor Freight pump kit and the pump doesn't work so I have to improvise but I take about three full tubes and I'll put them in this cup so the three tubes gives me about a little less than 50 probably about 40 milliliters but uh, I don't know if that's left over from the last time I got gas in there, but 
it smells like oil so i don't know if the the cutoff valves are working or not i'll uh, pull another sample later on and see what happens so far i think that's still okay well the plot thickens here so i went to put gas in it when i pulled the uh, gas cap the rubber seal stayed on the tank and when i pulled the seal off it was definitely a vacuum i thought this which was here was the tank vent so i thought i'd remove this and check it and it's not going to nothing so i come over here and i disconnected this line and this is a vent so i thought originally this went down in the gas this i thought was a vent but i pulled this cover back and followed the line and it goes to the gas the filter so this goes to the bottom of the tank this is the top of the tank so i'm going to put this guy on here i'm sorry so i'm going to put this guy on here and just remove this line uh, that way at least the air going into the tank will be filtered i might put a new filter on it um, yeah I, I always thought that might have been a vent but it's not or this might have been a vent and it's not it's that guy right there so i mean it's still running fine but there's only two inputs to the tank here in here so uh, let me go get a new filter and i want to plug it in right there so what's interesting now is i've cut the fuel off here that cuts it off from the tank but we're maintaining pressure and i don't like that because that means that the needle valve has to hold that pressure back and I see it dropping so it's got to go somewhere maybe I should have left that cutoff valve on here let me think about it all right we went about a mile I've got one and a half psi so we're gonna cut the fuel off to the carburetor and now relieve the pressure great i think that's going to work so i'm drying out a water bottle i'll <clears throat> put a date on it and i'm going to put that oil sample in it and then in a couple weeks i'll take another sample that way i can compare them side by side well my daughter ordered this jump pack and now she doesn't need it because I bought her a new battery for her car. So she paid 50 bucks for it on Amazon. I went and looked at the reviews and surprisingly it's got a lot of good reviews. And I watched Project Farm do a test on one like similar. So yeah, I'm just going to give her the money she paid for it because my other jump pack, it's a one shot and it's on the garden tractor so yeah i think i'm going to upgrade my jump pack to this guy and uh, dna motor motoring if anybody's interested and the model number is a a11 so yeah i'll uh, i'll give it a try i'm charging it up now